Hello, welcome to IASA's virtual leadership series. We're on episode three on clarity, approaching communicating differently. My name is Darren Reffitt. I'm the VP of eLearning for IASA, and I'm joined today again with Kerry Crockett, our executive director at IASA, and Kathy Elwood, who is the founder and president of Elwood Enterprises. So let's jump right in. We've talked about the fact that we need to be more flexible and, and there's these different ways of working and all that requires a different way of communication. So why don't we start with you, Kathy? What does that mean when we talk about, you know, communicating differently? So I think if I were going to leave you with anything today, one of the most important things I would want to leave you with is that you have to be much more deliberate and concise in your communication than ever before you've got to realize that you really can't um, look the person in the eye to determine whether or not they received your message. And you also have to take into account differences, more so than when you do in person, differences in generations, in communication style, compu communication preferences. And you have to have, particularly when you're communicating with teams, you've got to, um, really think about are they getting the message that you intended them to get so you don't have the ability to physically observe their body language and their interactions so you you also don't have the way an easy way to know if they've checked out of your meeting or not so the key point here is that you've got to really have methods and processes to be able to communicate effectively to be concise and to be deliberate. Yeah, I agree. And I think some of the other things we need to consider, um, you know, some of our larger organizations have teams that are scattered all over the world. And while they may have been used to um, communicating with them, they may be bringing in other team members now that aren't used to communicating with them. So we have to consider things like various time zones, language barriers, cultural impacts, those kinds of things. And I think, you know, too, we're seeing the effects of stress. Um, more than we have before. And so we have to take those into account as it, as it relates to that increased amount of communication and how much additional stress that places on everyone. Yeah, there's definitely been an increase in the amount of communication, whether it's via email, whether it's via Zoom meetings. Um, all of us are just, I think we're all trying to figure out the best way to communicate and it's just adding more clutter to our day. Uh, so what can we do to address some of those challenges? Carrie, why don't we start with you? Well, I think one of the things is especially specific to the coronavirus uh, impact that we're having right now and we're seeing is that we're making sure that we have to inform our teams, we have to reassure them, and we have to provide direct communication to them. I mean, when I'm thinking about informing, I mean, it's really about providing that up-to-date information for them and accurate information. Um, are your policies changing because of what's happening right now? Making sure that you're communicating those types of changes with your team. Additionally, we're making sure that we have to make sure that we're reassuring our team. It's really about validating their fears, their concerns, their anxieties that they're having. I mean, we're all in this together as we know. And, and I think, you know, we have to recognize that that's truly happening with them and, and thinking about ways that we can help alleviate that and how we're communicating with them. And then finally, of course, making sure that we're being very direct um, in our communications to them, making sure that we are um, uh, consistent and we're being frequent in our messaging to them so that there aren't mixed messages and confusion um, around what we expect from them um, and what they expect from themselves and the rest of their teammates as well. Absolutely. Kathy, how about from you? So uh, I wanna go back a little bit to your point about email. I had read a study not too long ago before the work from home really came to be a, as a result of COVID. And they were saying on average, most people, whether you work from home or not, have about 100 emails a day that they receive and send out about 40. And in this environment, it's probably twice as many on average, just because of the way it is, you're not communicating as much. So, you know, if that environment, if the pre COVID environment, took up 20% of your time, think about how much time the post-COVID or the environment we're in right now is taking up. So, you know, it, it just, it blows my mind how much we potentially can lose productivity as a result of all this, or potentially increase it 
Now, I talked a little bit about being deliberate. So how do you do that? I think that you have to really be able to clearly articulate what you're doing, what you want to have happen, who's going to be accountable for what, be much more specific than ever before, you know, in terms of this is who I want you to talk to, this is when it's due, here's accountable. Actually have somebody take the notes and share the information. I think that sometimes the person that's best in communication in a virtual world is the one that actually becomes one of the most valued employees because they're the ones that ensure all the actions get followed up on, get delivered, and they're the ones that make things happen. It's great suggestions. Uh, so let's talk about the technology side, Kathy. Aside from the basics, I mean, we all know that Zoom is the new boardroom, right? We're all used to that now. Uh, but are there ways technology can either help or even hinder us as we're communicating during these times? Well, I think so. I think that it all depends on the message. And I, th I think, you know, technology is a key enabler of any type um, of communication. We've seen that. But, you know, if you use technology incorrectly, it can also be disastrous. I mean, do you really want to communicate feedback? negative feedback through an email? I don't think so. You know, do you want to, if you're communic in this day and age right now, if you want to communicate bad news, you probably need to communicate it to everybody at once. And so, you know, it's really important to tailor the message to the type of communication that you're going to use. So if it's something that's personal and one-on-one, -on -one, you're probably going to want to use video, right? Right. If it's something that want, requires interaction, you know, maybe you can use text, but if there's something that requires emotion, I would highly recommend using video. There's also technology that can be used to check the level of engagement of people. You know, are they interacting? Are they not just click points, but you know, are people participating? How are they using technologies throughout the day? I don't know that you want to get into the point where you're micromanaging, but I do think that there are ways to leverage technology to more effectively work together as a team. You know, you talked a little bit about Zoom, and I know that Slack, a lot of organizations are using yeah. Slack and Trello, and there's so many different ones. Airtable is one I personally like, but, you know, there's technologies that will make you more pro productive if you want to use them. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we pretty much use Slack for one-off conversations or, or quick, you know, what you would normally do in a hallway. And, uh, you know, then obviously there are times where an email or, or a meeting are better. One thing you need to also consider, I will throw out, is what your technology will enable. And what I mean by that is at a previous company, our Slack, we used the free version or the light version, which meant it only archived the last, you know, two weeks of history. You couldn't see further than that. So at that point, you really need to think about, okay, is this something that I'm going to want to make sure I can reference again in two months? Or is this something that it's okay if it expires and I can't access it? So, um, Carrie, uh, you know, what else can we do? Um, any other thoughts around this before we, we are getting close to our time. So I'm going to close us up with closing thoughts here in a moment. Well, I think I just want to make the point about, you know, making sure that you're keeping your team engaged in, in all of this, um, you know, that we have going on right now. You know, sometimes we're on video team calls and, you know, you can tell where some are being a little more silent, reluctant to speak. Um, make sure that you're calling on those people. Make sure that you're bringing them into the conversation if they're not comfortable uh, speaking out or try to detect from body language or facial cues if they seem to be struggling and they're not quite sure where they're fitting into what's going on. You know, maybe you need to take those cues and have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. So I think, you know, it gives us that opportunity to make sure that we are engaging everybody and giving them an opportunity to be a part of that team and a part of the conversation. But it also, as leaders, gives us the opportunity visually to check in on them and to see from some of that um, nonverbal communication what's happening with them and so what kind of stress they may be under. Do they look disheveled? and haggard? Do they look tired? Um, those kinds of things that, you know, you might not really notice in the day-to-day -day, uh, office space when everybody's passing by everybody in the hallway. So 
I think it just gives you that great opportunity to sort of check in with people visually as well. And that's a big part of communication, that nonverbal piece. Uh, so making sure that we're, we're tuning into that and making sure we're recognizing it and making sure that we're able to address uh, issues that we're seeing, um, you know, with our teams. Kathy, I remember uh, at one of your sessions at ISA last year, I, or the year before, I recall you quoting a stat about, um, about communication. Um, something about uh, 10 times more effective? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was true. Face-to-face -face is 10 times more effective than the phone, and the phone is 10 times more effective than email, okay? So there's another point I want to make, though. Sometimes we get to the, when we're communicating, we forget the power of telling a story. We forget the power of telling the why we're making things happen. When we're communicating, it's a lot more effective to tell stories, to reinforce the message that we're trying to send. Did you know that if you tell, if you're trying to get a point across with just data and facts, only two parts of your brain light up. But if you're trying to tell a story and you're using data and facts and stories and examples, eight to nine different parts of your brain light up, which means you become a lot more engaged, a lot more interested, and you're more likely to remember what it is that the person's trying to convey. I do think that it's really critical that when you're communicating, particularly when you're leading teams and leading virtual meetings, you're going to need to be clear about what the agenda is, what the purpose of the meeting is. You're going to need to make sure that you define your desired outcome for the meeting, who's going to be responsible for what, what action items are to be followed up on. You know, specifically, you're going to want to be more deliberate with everything that everybody is assigned to do, the who, what, why, where, and when. And probably most importantly, you need to make sure that everybody is given the opportunity to participate in the meeting, to make sure that they understand their responsibility, that they understand what's expected of them and the opportunity to ask any questions. So when they're moving forward with the next meeting or the next part of work that they've taken on, they know how to proceed. Okay. Um, Carrie, any other thoughts around how to keep people engaged during virtual meetings that you'd like to throw in? And then we're going to be wrapping up. No, I think we've covered most of them. I mean, again, just making sure that if somebody's not speaking up, bring them into that conversation. That's great. Um, so this is a perfect segue. I think a nice place to, to close out. Our next episode is going to be on teamwork and how you can foster collaboration in these trying times and virtually. Uh, so let's wrap up with any final thoughts. Carrie. I think for me, the biggest thing is just make sure you are communicating to your team. Keep the dialogue open, um, but most importantly, be emotionally present for them. Um, it's a difficult time for everybody. We recognize the stress that everyone is under. And I think just being emotionally present for your team and making sure that you are communicating um, as frequently as possible um, that people can tolerate um, and, and as accurately and as clearly and concisely as you possibly can. Okay, great. Kathy? I think the most important thing that you can do is to be deliberate. I said that at the beginning and I'm saying at the end, be deliberate in what you communicate, how you communicate it, pre-plan what you're going to say. I know you can't always pre-plan every word that you say, but the message you can. And think about what you want people to receive. You know, how do you want them to feel? How do you want them to, to interact with you? What do you want them to do? If you can think about that in advance and anticipate what their responses might be, you're going to be a better communicator. And more importantly, you're going to have them engaged and you increase the chance that they're going to get done what you've wanted them to do. That's great. And that's a great way to wrap up. Uh, to those of you watching, thank you so much. We look forward to having you join us next week uh, for teamwork and collaboration. And Carrie, Kathy, as always, thank you so much for taking your time out. Uh, stay safe out there and we look forward to seeing you next week.